In this example, we're going to be going over how we receive invoices um, and also in the same workflow, how we use estimates with our invoices and receiving that payment. This is something that is very, very helpful when we're doing bookkeeping cleanup, because if our client happens to use the estimates or invoices option, it's part of, you know, maybe their industry. It's not always a part of everyone's industry and not every business needs to use invoices. But if your client is using invoices or estimates as well, this is going to be the workflow in which we are going to make sure that we follow. Um, so let's jump back to our QuickBooks. So let's jump into creating an estimate. To get here, we're going to just go to plus new and click on estimate. And this always drives me a little crazy, but this is not in order of the workflow that it normally would be if we were to follow the, you know, the proper workflow in QuickBooks. So we go down to estimate, click on that, and I'm gonna bring up one that I had already just created. All right, this is one I just created about a couple minutes ago. I just failed to record it. So now I'm back recording it over again, but I'm just gonna walk you guys through it. It's the same thing. Um, when you create the estimate, it's going to give you guys the number already. Uh, what you guys would do in this case, we're going to, let me just restart it as if nothing happened. <laughs> so I chose Amy's Bird Sanctuary. It's just the first customer that pops up on my um, scrolling, my device here <laughs> on the drop down menu. Jeez. All right. So it auto fills everything I need. And like I tell my students all the time, every time, make sure that you guys are working left to right, top to bottom, just like we read a book. That way we ensure that we're creating good habits and we aren't missing any fields. So everything is already pre-filled here, if, as long as you have all that information. If you don't, I recommend making sure that you do. This pending here tells us what's going on with this estimate. Has our client accepted it? Is it closed? Closed and accepted are different things. Closed means we've, we've closed it or they've, they haven't accepted it and maybe time has expired. Um, and then rejected. Maybe they actually didn't, in, you know, they didn't, for whatever reason, want to go with this estimate. I like to make sure that I'm up to date with these estimates to help keep us organized. So estimate date, let's use today's date, and I put it for seven days out. So they have about a week to um, reply back to see if they want to move forward with this estimate. And what I did was I created just a little scenario here. And um, I put, you know, we're going to, we're going to build a fountain. <laughs> it's going to be, uh, we're going to be spending money on design, the concrete for the fountain, the fountain, it's uh, pump, the fountain pump, sorry. And then the fountain itself. So, you know, kind of makes sense as far as scenario goes. These three items here are all tangible items. And that means that there are taxes included to this. That's something that you would set up before um, creating any invoices for your clients or if that's something that they need set, set up or have set up, we're just gonna review it. We are gonna go over sales tax later in this um, section. So we're just gonna kind of go through this right now. Most of you understand how this works. Uh, messages di message displayed on estimate, message displayed on statement. Uh, this counts California, uh, sales tax, Tucson sales, sales tax, it just depends on your client. Um, in this case, I'm not gonna change anything. Uh, and again, like I said, I'm gonna go over taxes in another section. For this example, we're just gonna stick to what we have. So you can save and send. And we're using the sample company, so it's not really gonna send anything. Here's where you guys can set up uh, any messages you guys can, this is a part of a template already. You guys can adjust and edit the templates as needed, or you guys can man manually add any messages here. Okay, and obviously it's not a sample company. All right, so say our client's client is ecstatic and loves her estimate. So she emails us and she says, yes, let's go with it. Let's, you know, I, send me the invoice I wanna pay. So what I'm going to do is I, I like to go, I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like to keep searching 
everywhere and going back to sales, going back to estimates, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. If you didn't know, the magnifying glass will do this for us. It'll bring up everything that was most recent. So we're just going to go into estimates because this is the one we just created. So when your client's client agrees to their estimate, I want you to change pending to accepted. Uh, Amy via email. I had put that in earlier when I thought I was recording to the right tab, but apparently I was not. So it, I just put via email to give my leave myself as many breadcrumbs and as many notes as possible. And what I would do if this was truly the case, then I would attach that said email to this estimate, giving myself more backup and more source documents to support any claims, you know, say they're like, my clients come back and they're like, hey, my customer didn't accept this. How do you know? Always leave myself breadcrumbs, cookie crumbs, and CYA, covering my ass or covering your ass. <laughs> so here we're going to click on create invoice. If you select this drop down, it says copy to purchase order. We are not doing that. That is for the AP side of things, purchase orders are. We're going to stick to the AR right now and create an invoice. Leave without saving. No, let's save first. All right, now we're going to select create an invoice. And what that's going to do, it's going to bring everything on that estimate over to our invoice. And it's super helpful because that means we don't have to do extra work. All of this on the right hand side is just extra stuff that can be billed out to this client that's already in the QuickBooks sample company. So we'll talk about that later. This was billable time for a custom design. We can open that up and find out where exactly that came from. You know, it says the date here. So it doesn't have as many notes because this is a sample company. But if this was the case and it, it um, needed to be charged to a client, we can create a new email, uh, a new invoice with just this or add it to this invoice but i would recommend keeping if you're using you know this scenario where maybe your client is a landscaper or they do, they do projects by estimate i would keep all of the details of one project to that project and if anything um, needs to be built out or charged based on maybe another agreement another project or something totally different from this particular invoice i would say create a new invoice that way we can stay organized. So if you see here, it says linked estimate, and that was the one we were just working on. Everything is the same. And as you can see, I'm just going to close this window right here. Anything with the little link here on the right hand column means that it was linked and brought over from the estimate. Now, let's just say our clients like, oh, I forgot we're going to need rocks. So if you could, could you please add rocks to this invoice? Not a problem there's the rocks and you notice the link isn't there the sales tax there we're gonna probably need to put in a dollar amount here let's add a hundred dollars for rocks all right so even though the rocks weren't part of the original estimate we still want to include it on our invoice but we want to make sure that we have a differential that the estimate came over with these four and then the rocks were added on and again, we'll talk more about the sales tax in our next uh, steps here, but everything's the same message on invoice, message on statement, attach any documents that go with it, emails, conversations, save and send. Sorry, I had a yawn there. And save and close. All right. So before we um, before we jump into the next step, I want to show you guys the balance sheet on where this is affected. All right. And then I'm going to I'm going to give you guys an example of why we would use an estimate. So using today's date in our accounts receivable, we have this total here. And oh, come on, scroll up. Sorry. There we go. So I'm going to change the date to reflect the most recent. So there is our invoice that we just created today, just now, for that amount. 
So it's already affecting our books as far as it's on the ledger. It Once it's an invoice, it's now currently a part of our books. We can see that it's hitting our balance sheet. Now say, say for instance, I never turn this into an invoice. So let me pause you here. I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to actually delete this invoice. Not something I recommend, but only for this example only, okay? All right, I deleted it. It's still there right now, but if I was to refresh the report, it is now gone. But it is still an estimate, okay? Still an estimate. It's just without the rocks that we had en um, originally entered, okay? See, the create invoice is still there. So that's why you would use an estimate so that you don't have a client that has all these open invoices. Open invoices create issues on your balance sheet and um, they're an asset. So that means if you have 6,000, 7,000, hey, $6 million, and I've seen it, $6 million sitting on your balance sheet, that's, and it's on the AR section, right? AR is part of the assets. So what's an asset? If you refer back to our um, intro to bookkeeping video, an asset is something that can be liquidized, turned into cash. So in this, and in this case, anything in this balance here that hasn't been paid, we can collect on. It's owed to us. So it's considered an asset. One of the best ways to review that said asset in accounts receivable isn't through this section here. It's actually through the AR report. Um, save and exit. I don't know what I'm saving here. Accounts receivable aging summary. That's the same total that we saw in our AR. And this tells us what customers still owe our clients. And if they're current, um, that means that they are okay, meaning you know they don't owe the money just yet. But anything in these three columns or even four columns, that means that that client's clients or that client's customer, they owe them and are late. So this is something that I'm going to talk about in our pricing and services section when we get there, because this is another service and um, big service that you guys can offer if you have a client that has a huge AR aging report and something that they can help, you can help collect on. So let's move into the next part where we can create from this estimate. We're going to create the invoice back again and I'm just going to redo it. You guys can watch me redo it just the way I did in our previous um, time doing it. All right, close that. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. And we said we added rocks to this. And I believe our cost was $100 for rocks. There we go. And I'm just going to save and close or I'm, actually I'm just going to save. Okay. There are other options to creating a receive payment. I'm going to stay here for receive the payment. Uh, I'm just going to go right into this invoice. One of the easiest ways not to screw this up is to do it this way. There are other options to do this. For instance, you guys can come out here. You guys can just click on, um, receive payment. It'll take us to the same window, but we'll have to choose the customer and you know, it, it's definitely a different way to do it. Um, I'm going to do it the way I just showed you guys where I bring up the invoice itself. And then I'm going to select receive payment. Now, if you have a client that is paying on multiple invoices, we're going to do it a different way because then you would have to pay multiple invoices. And that's when you guys can say, go straight to receive payment and any invoices that are open will pop up like this. So say Amy sent us a check or she was like, hey, what's my total gonna be? I'm going to transfer it via Zelle or Venmo or however, Stripe payments. I don't know, 
Maybe they're just going to pay on both of these. But if, if we need to manually receive payment, this is how we would do it, especially if they are going to pay on multiple invoices. Um, in this case, I won't choose the multiple. I'm just going to pay the one. So going left to right, top to bottom, payment date, payment method. Let's say she just paid a check. Reference. Now maybe she dropped the check off. Undeposited funds. I would actually leave it in undeposited funds if I if my client has not deposited that check yet. If it if they automatically deposit it in like maybe 10 minutes, even still, I would then I would like click check you know, the checking account that it's going to go into. But if it's a physical check, guys, and I don't know if you guys remember those little blue um, foamy envelopes that uh, businesses or banks used to give businesses to keep their cash or checks uh, so that they could bring that in there with all their money and uh, checks and deposit it all. It's like a little deposit um, blue zippy envelope purse thing. So anyway, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just whoosh, up over your head. Um, if you do know, then that means you're old like me. Yay. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and save and close. And like I said, the undeposited funds will end up staying there until my client moves it over. And we're going to go through that step next. So let's go ahead and save and close. Now we've received payment for the invoice. The invoice is closed. Okay. So the invoice shall not show up now or it will. Um, it should not show up on my accounts receivable aging because it's been paid. And when I show you on the balance sheet, you'll see what I mean. Oh, there we go. And I'm just gonna move this again in the order of more recent. And you could see that these two amounts offset each other because this was the charge and then this was the payment and it went to undeposited funds. So that's why it's a little hard to read the accounts receivable here when it's very, very convoluted. So let's go into um, a couple of the next steps and um, talk more about receiving money. And uh, actually, let me take you guys through just one more step since I've got gotcha. you. Uh, let's go to the undeposited funds. One second.